So right now we're in the Vicon flight space. And as you can see in this room, we have a series of 20 Vicon cameras, which are each uh, updating uh, their uh, estimates of the positions of the robots at a very high frame rate. And so this might be 100 or even up to 200 frames per second on a lot of different targets. And it does this by looking at the retroreflective These markers on each of the robots, and then knowing what the pattern of each robot looks like to then have a correspondence for the full six degree of freedom uh, uh, position and pose of the uh, robot in six uh, dimensional space. And so then this is what we're able to use to control the robots uh, at a high rate and uh, high accuracy down to submillimeter precision uh, if the system is calibrated correctly. And so right now we can go and we can turn the system on. So in order to turn on the Vicon system, we have a series of uh, two control boxes. And each of these control boxes must be on in the back and then uh, turned on using these invisible touch buttons. And you can see that it's a little bit of magic trying to figure out exactly where those buttons are. But you'll hear a uh, hum once the system turns on. Uh, so after we turn these boxes on, we come over to the Vicon control computer here. And this computer will need to boot up Vicon Tracker 1.3. And this computer is a little slow, uh, and so there's a couple bugs with the system, but in general, it, it tends to behave pretty well. Once we have both this on and the systems booted up, you'll note that some of the cameras are starting to come online. And so they have blue lights that will turn on and it soon start flashing red. And once they're on, you need to verify that all of the cameras are on, all 20 cameras. Um, each of the control boxes has a, a different number of cameras, and you need to make sure all of the cameras are on before using the system. Then we can come in, and to use the system, we can use the mouse to navigate. And we can see, uh, using the uh, right wheel to zoom in and out, or the, uh, sorry, the, uh, the right click to zoom in and out, the, the mouse wheel, if you click it in, you're able to pan. Uh, and using the, uh, the, the left mouse button, you're able to uh, change your angle about the space. And you can see down in the lower uh, left corner, we have a coordinate system. So now I'm going to take this robot, robot 14, and go and put it into the Vicon space. And you'll notice that as I walk into the space, on the screen, there start to appear the markers of tracking this robot. And so as I move it and set it down into the middle of the room, it's currently being localized by those four points that I showed previously. And we can zoom in on those four points to see exactly what it looks like in three-dimensional space. Now I know that that robot is robot 21, so if I select that robot on the screen right here, we see that it starts to be tracked, and we can localize uh, both where it is and its orientation. And so you can see that this is the uh, x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis of the frame. Um, if, however, on this screen, the robot appears jittery or jumpy, the system needs to be recalibrated. In order to do that, we can go over to the Calibrate tab, and we can uh, start calibrating. In order to calibrate, we need to first create camera masks. And that means removing as many markers as possible from the scene. So right now, I'm going to try and eliminate as many markers as I can uh, from the room. So now you can see that there are no markers present in the space. And this was done by finding all of the markers, even little uh, markers, pieces, remnants on the floor, and trying to remove them from the space to make sure that there are no errant markers and we aren't getting some false positives. Then what we need to do is we need to create camera masks. And by creating the mask, it essentially blocks uh, points that have been already diagnosed. So for instance, if there are uh, metallic objects that are constantly reflecting but aren't creating correspondences for items, this will eliminate those from being detected from each of those individual cameras. After the mask has been created, and usually you let that run for about 10 or 15 seconds, then we want to start calibrating the cameras. And we look at the parameters, and we want to be doing a full calibration just to make sure that everything is being done uh, entirely from, from scratch. All cameras. And in general, the number of frames you do, the higher the count, the better the refinement is. So for instance, if we take uh, 1,500, we'll do an all right calibration. But if you want a super high quality calibration, we like to do on the order of about four or 5,000. And this means that there's four or 5,000 correspondences per camera. And so right now, I'm going to set it to 3,000. And with auto stop selected, this means once every camera has 3,000 3, correspondences, it will stop the calibration and then hit start. So at this point, we take the calibration wand, which is a specially uh, designed instrument, and bring it into the space. So in order to fully see what's happening, 
with the calibration, we need to make sure that we set it up to look at each of the individual cameras. And so to do that, change from 3D perspective, the viewpoint up in the upper left, to camera. And this displays each of the cameras. And you may have to go in and select all of the cameras that you want to be viewing. Once you've done this, you can see on each of the screens, the blue dots is where we previously masked, masked each of the cameras. Uh, and the, the waves are where the wand is being uh, seen currently in the frame. So as I move it around, you can see it being updated on each of the different cameras that it's currently seeing as I move through the space. And my goal right now is to try and get as many of the cameras in as many frames as possible in as many different places as possible. So down on the ground, all over the space to try and make sure that everywhere is calibrated equally as well. Right now, you can see that each of the cameras displays how many counts they have uh, for correspondences. And the goal is to get this up to 3,000. So any 3,000s are over, uh, over 3,000s are equal to green. Anything less is smaller. So if we go in, we can select camera two. And when we do select camera two, its light turns bright blue. And I know that this camera needs more correspondences. And so I'll try to give it as much uh, view time as possible until after some amount of time passes, it gets up to that 3,000 count. So camera calibration tends to be a two-person job with one person telling which cameras need uh, more attention and the other person waving their wand. So right now, Yash is helping me to detect which cameras need it. So number 13, he says, now needs it. And I think that one's over here. This one? Thanks. Any others, Yash? And so that's uh, calibration. Now we need to wait. And if we go and we look at the screen, we can see that um, so if we hit stop, we're waiting for the camera to calibrate. So down here, we're waiting for this to get to 100%. And this may take a couple of minutes. So, so it's important to align the uh, correspondences of the cameras with the inertial frame of the room. And to do this, we put the wand in the center of the room where the, uh, the handle is in the positive Y direction. And so we place this in the middle and use the tape as guides. And finally, we need to ensure that the, uh, the uh, air bubbles, the, the gravitational bubbles, are in the uh, correct orientation such that down is exactly uh, corresponding with gravity. After this has been done, we can move back to the computer, which has already uh, determined where the cameras are, but not with a given uh, orientation. And so after this calibration has been done and it's completed, we need to look and make sure that the image error is within uh, tolerance. And in general, most of the cameras should be between 0.2, uh, ideally less than that, but definitely below 0.3 in the image error. After this is done, we click start or uh, set volume origin. And this takes that frame and makes it the correspondence of the, the zero uh, position and uh, pose. So now we can see that the cameras have readjusted and they look exactly like they do in the real world. Finally, we need to save this calibration. And we can do this um, into the calibrations folder and label that correctly with the date. So. And now this calibration has been saved and ready to use. And that's calibration.